What's up guys? This video is going to cover exponential growth and decay and key concepts associated with that. So let's begin. The first thing you need to know about exponential growth and decay is that there are a couple different types of expressions that can be set up. Um, we're going to teach this with just kind of using a very standard example of a bank account. And uh, as you can see over here on the exponential growth side, we have the value of the uh, variable A, which is your initial value, and then the value of R, which is the rate of growth in this case as a decimal. So let's do a quick example of that. Let's say you're starting off with $100 in the bank as your initial value. So A is $100. Let's just say you are investing money in the bank and you are getting a 5% return on your money. The value of R is going to be equal to 5%. But 5% in decimal form is 0 0.05. And then the uh, value of x, that in this case is going to represent the amount of years that you would be having your money invest or the exponential um, growth function would be occurring. So let's just say you invest your money for 10 years. Well, simplifying this expression, 1 plus 0 0.05 is 1.05, but then I also went ahead and raised that to the power of 10, and that's how I got the 1.629 number that you are seeing right there. And then when you do 1.629 times 100, you get 162.89, and that is basically telling you after 10 years of investing $100 at 5% interest, you would have $162.89. And that's an example of exponential growth. The amount of money started off at 100, and then it grew to 162. And it grew because we are adding a percent return every year. Let's look at the flip side. Let's look at an example where we are showing exponential decay instead, where the big difference, and you can see right there with that red arrow, you are getting a minus sign inside of the parentheses instead of a plus sign. So that is going to make the function decrease. Notice how instead of 1 plus 0 0.05, it now says 1 minus 0 0.05. And when you do that subtraction, you would get 0.95 inside of the parentheses. And raising that to the power of 10 is going to change the parentheses to 0.599. You are still initially um, putting $100 in the bank, but this time when you multiply 100 by 0.599, you have 59.87, and that is again an example of exponential decay. Uh, the word decay means things are getting smaller, and the idea here is that if you were to invest $100 and maybe it was in a bad bank account, and you're losing 5%, that's why it says minus 0 0.05. Remember, 0 0.05 is really just 5% in percentage form. And uh, with an exponential decay function, you are getting a uh, smaller return, and we started off with a hundred dollars and after 10 years at 95 percent return or not 95 percent return um five we're losing five percent so we're only retaining 95 percent of the number's value uh you wind up right there with 59.87 let's look at some other examples though that have to do with some graphs just to kind of show how this concept translates to more of a visual Right here we have um, an example where if you want to maybe pause the video and try to answer the part A through C questions, I have a bunch of those prepared right now, and uh, anytime we go to a new slide, you're welcome to pause the video and uh, do the problems before hitting play. So in this first example, we have um, a graph that, uh, and let's just go ahead and attack part A right now, is the money in the account growing or decaying? Well, the money is growing. We would know that because the graph is moving up 
from left to right. It's going in an upward direction from left to right. And then based on the function, that's the next part right there. How do you know from the function that this is exponential growth? Well, 1 plus r, which is the value inside of the parentheses that's getting raised to the power of x. We don't have parentheses in this function. They chose to leave the parentheses off, um, but it is still implied that the 1.05 you see there did have parentheses around it. And because 1.05 is greater than 1, we know that this is a growth function without even having to look at the graph. You can determine that just by looking at the actual function, that because it says 1.05, that's greater than 1, so we have exponential growth. Part B, what is the rate of growth or decay, and what does it mean in the context? Well, to figure out the rate, you just have to take, in this case, because it's a growth function, 1 plus r, which we know is equal to 1.05, and we are going to subtract 1 from both sides, and we are left with an r value of 0 0.05. And 0 0.05, if you were to put it back into percent form, you would have a rate of 5%. In the context of this problem, because it's talking about Tyler's savings account, we know that the account is growing by 5% each year. That's what it means in the context of the problem. Part C, what does the 500 represent? That is the initial value. You can see right there from the function and from the graph. And those are the next two questions right there. How do you know from the graph? Well, you simply look for the y-intercept. The y-intercept is always the initial value in an exponential growth or decay function. How do you know from looking at the function well, the value of A, which is the number in front of everything, is 500. So again, A, the number in front of your exponential function, that is going to be your initial value, which is also the y-intercept if you were to be looking at a graph. Moving on, um, a couple more parts to this example. So again, if you pause the video, you can do parts D and E. Consider f of 8 equals 738 point, and then a whole lot of decimals. And uh, while this is the correct value of the function, is it an appropriate answer? And this is where you got to kind of think, what is the context of this problem? This problem is talking about a savings account. A savings account is related to money. We have an example right here that is showing us a decimal that has many, many decimal places, many more decimal places than how money typically works. This is not an appropriate answer because our monetary system, the U.S. monetary system, goes to two decimal places, not however many decimal places are right there. What is that? Three, six, not nine decimal places, only two. So 738 points and then all of that mumbo jumbo, um, that is not an appropriate answer because in the context of the problem, we are talking about a savings account and that is money. Money only goes to two decimal places. Part E, what would be an appropriate domain for the function when modeling this situation? There's a very important vocabulary word there, domain. The word domain is referring to all of the x values in the problem, all of the input values in the problem that you could raise 1.05 to. And when you think about it, x is representing the uh, amount of years as it says in the problem, the amount of years that have gone by since Tyler invested his money. And since time is measured in a, um, in a positive manner, the amount of years would have to be greater than or equal to zero. It could, of course, be equal to zero because the very instant Tyler deposits his initial value of $500, no time has gone by. So technically, X could be zero, but it could not be negative because time does not move backwards. Time is a positive value.
Another example, again, feel free to pause the video. We'll go through this one a little faster right now because it's essentially the same situation, only we have a car that was purchased and the value of the car is decaying. How do you know from the graph? The graph goes down from left to right. And how do you know from the function the uh, value of 1 minus r? Because, again, this is a decaying function. The value of 1 minus r is going to be less than 1, and then if you did the arithmetic and you subtracted 1 from both sides of that inequality right there, and you divided both sides by negative 1, you would get an R, a rate of 0.95. And you can also just think of that by um, asking yourself the following. If 1 minus R is going to be less than 1, and you know that it says... 0.91. Oops, I see. I have a little typo right there. Let me just fix that really quickly so I have to restart the entire video. Uh, 0.95 is not correct. That is supposed to be uh, point. Oh, let me just fix this right here. 0.91, not 0.95. Typos happen, especially in the middle of videos. There we go. Now we should be back on track. There we go. 0.91 is less than 1. Um, and then to figure out that rate, since 1 minus r is going to be 0.91, and we take away 1 from both sides, and uh, we are left with negative r is going to equal negative 0 0.09, we would just go ahead and uh, divide both sides by negative 1, and the rate would be a 9% decay. And just think about it. If you had 0.91 and you added 0.09 to it, which is the number we have right there, that answer would equal 1.00, which uh, if we did have a common ratio right there uh, of 1, well, multiplying by 1.00, which is the same thing as 1, that wouldn't change anything. You would have neither growth nor decay if the value right here were equal to 1. The fact that the um, value of 1 minus r or 1 plus r is either greater than or less than 1 means your function will either grow or decay. If it were equal to 1, well, 1 1 to the power of x, that's, uh, that's always going to be 1. A couple more parts of this problem. Again, feel free to pause the video and answer these last two questions. What does 21,000 represent? That is the initial value of the car. How do you know from the graph? You can just look at the y-intercept. How do you know from the function? The value of a, which is in front of the 0.91, is 21,000. And then part D, find f of 5. What does it mean in the context? Well, if you plug in 5 to the function, that means you are raising 0.91 to the fifth power. And when you do that correctly, you'll have uh, rounded 0 0.6240 and then times 21,000. And that's going to give you uh, a decayed value of this car at $13,104.68, which makes sense. The moment you buy a car, it's already going to be losing its value. Oh, and in the context of the problem, uh, you can say it is the depreciated car value. That is the technical term for this. Here's a word problem. Suppose you bought an antique desk for $650. Each year, the value of the desk increases by 5%. Write an exponential function. Go ahead and pause the video if you want to do this one on your own, but here we go. We know that we are going to have either a growth or decaying model with either 1 plus r or 1 minus r. Because it says the value of the desk is increasing, we know we are in 1 plus r. And it says 5%, so 5% in decimal form is 0 0.05, so we have 1.05. The function is supposed to be called v of t, and since we have everything we need, we can just put the answer together. The initial value was $650, so that's going to be the value of a. And then when we multiply that by 1 plus r, which was 1.05, we would simply raise that to the power of t, and we have our function right here. 650 times 1.05 times t. 
Another example, feel free to pause. The graph of the function is shown below. Construct a function to model this relationship. This is a very good example because you're going to solve for um, the common ratio b in a slightly different way. Uh, remember, the standard form for an exponential function is a times b to the power of x. a is going to be your y-intercept, which we can see right there at 0.05. And then B, that's your common ratio. And basically, you're going to be looking at your Y values and trying to figure out the pattern. Are the Y values doubling, tripling, quadrupling? Whatever that pattern is, is what you're trying to figure out right now for the Y values. And here's the quick way to do it. Take a look at the two consecutive Y values that were given to you in the problem. Right here, we have 1, 3, the number 3 being that y value, and then the y value that precedes it, the one that's right before it, 0, 0,5. 0 0.5 is the y value that precedes the y value of 3. Again, I just took two consecutive y values, two y values that were in a row, and look at what I'm doing with them. I am dividing them, and I am dividing them because an exponential function is multiplying b by however many uh, times the exponent of x is asking for. The undoing of multiplication is, of course, division. And since we already have the coordinate points for this function, to undo what is going on in this function, just to kind of figure out what the value of b is, you would simply divide. So 3 divided by 0.5 is equal to 6. And another way to think about that is if you did, oh, a little too much text came out right there. Let me just go ahead and fix that really quickly. Um, another way to think about that, 0.5 is the y value that you have, and then the y value right after that is 3. The uh, way you would use multiplication to go from 0.5 to 3 well, you would simply have to multiply 0.5 times 6 in order to get 3. It's kind of one of those problems where you have to think a little bit backwards. How did you go from 0.5 to 3? Well, you would need to multiply 0.5 by 6 in order to figure that out. And at the end of the day, if understanding the logic of getting this number 6 wasn't quite clear, just remember the following. Take 2 consecutive y values, two y values that are right next to each other, and just divide the second one by the first one, and you will always get the common ratio. Let's take a look at one more example, which is going to kind of repeat that consecutive y value idea from the previous example. We have a table this time, not a graph. We still have to make an exponential function. So remember, we have a times b to the power of x. That is the basic form. A is the initial value, and in this case, 5 is what is paired with an x value of 0, so that means 5 is going to be the initial value. We need to figure out b, and here's the thing. b is going to be your common ratio, and as I said in the previous slide, you want two consecutive output values in order to divide them. And in this case, the first two output values, take, take notice right here, um, the x values are 0 and then 2, meaning the x value of 1 was skipped. And as I said on the previous slide, you need two consecutive y values, uh, two y values that go one after the other. And because these first two coordinate points are not one after the other, x is skipping one, we need to actually use the next two coordinates, where x is 2 and then x is 3. These are consecutive coordinate points, so we are good to take our output values, our y values. Remember, g of x is just the same thing as y. We are ready to take those values and simply divide them. 135 divided by 45 is 3, so that means our function, g of x, will have an initial value 
value of 5, and it would be multiplied by a common ratio of 3 raised to the power of x. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope I answered any questions you might have had about exponential growth and decay. Go ahead and leave a like, leave a comment if you have any questions, and thank you for watching. Have a great day.